Hello everybody and welcome again to the Expert Art Radiology channel. This is Dr. Tamer Gawish. Hope you enjoyed the last video and in this video we'll begin starting uh, to examine real cases. We will uh, scroll the whole case and then we will see how to write a well-structured report. So let's uh, get started right away with the first case and then see how we can write a report. So first we have the axial uh, T2 and axial PD with fat suppression. We will start, as we said before, with examining all the structures we can examine in the axis. So first let's take a look at the patella and the urethropatellar cartilage, examine this in the T2 and in the PD fat. We don't see any particular pathology at the retropatellar cartilage, both retinacula medial and lateral are apparently intact. As we said before, and we will always highlight this, examine the ACL femoral attachment, make sure it's homogeneous, hypointense, there is no fluid signal within or surrounding it. So the ACL attachment is apparently intact. And if you continue with the rest of the ACL fibers down to the tibial attachment in the axial, it also looks good. Uh, let's take a look at the other structures the muscles, the tendons, and the marrow. So there is no marrow abnormality. All muscles and tendons look good. We see here a small cyst, multi-loculated cyst, uh, insinuated, as we said, between the semimembranoses and the medial head of the gastrocnemius. That's a small bigger cyst, and there is mild or minor amount of joint diffusion. So that's what we can identify now for the axial scans. There is no definite other pathology. Now let's switch to the sagittal and uh, the coronal scans to see what we can find. So first, let's uh, take a look at the sagittal scans and we here see the coronal so we know where, where we are. This is the medial femoral uh, condyle, so that's the medial aspect of the joint and that's the lateral aspect of the joint. So as we start from the medial aspect, uh, you can uh, see that there is hyperintensity, there is abnormal hyperintense signal uh, within the um, posterior horn of the medial meniscus. This is mature bone, you can see there is no epiphyseal plate. This is a uh, 40 uh, something uh, years old uh, lady, and you can see here there is abnormal signal within the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. That's just meniscal degeneration and we know it's degeneration because there is no interruption of the superior or the inferior articular surfaces okay and we can see this in the corona scan as well there is swelling and abnormal hyperintensity within the posterior horn of the median meniscus not reaching the meniscal surface uh, if we switch uh, to the lateral side you can see there is normal appearance of the lateral meniscus anterior horn posterior horn this is the meniscal body, which is uh, rectangular in the sagittal scan, and the horns are rectangular in the coronal scans. As we said, we have to make sure the meniscal bodies are intact, there is no amputated fragment, all the triangles are sharp-edged, pinpoint apex, there is no meniscal uh, pathology. What else can we see? We can uh, now verify there is the uh, amount of joint fusion is just minimal, Take a look at the suprapatellar fat pad, at the Hoffa's fat pad, all are intact. ACL is quite good, homogeneous, hypointense from the femoral to the tibial attachment. Posterior crochet ligament is also nice. At the coronal scan, you can take uh, quite a good look on the medial collateral ligament. It's normal. And on the other side, the lateral collateral ligament is also normal. And you can see here, this is the arcuate ligament we highlighted in the previous video and all the uh, posterolateral structures. This is this fine structure is the arcuate ligament. And uh, of course, we have here the popliteus tendon passing and there will be a tiny ligament drawn just behind the arcuate ligament. This is the popliteofibular uh, ligament. So the posterolateral corner structures are intact. Uh, let's identify the posterior oblique ligament at the posteromedial corner to make sure we are clearly seeing everything. So just above the joint space, you can see this is the medial collateral ligament fibers, and these are the fibers of the posterior oblique ligament at the posteromedial corner. So we now know this is just 
mild degeneration of the posterior horn of the median meniscus with minimal joint effusion, articular cartilage is intact, everything else is intact, so ju that's just mild degeneration of the posterior horn median meniscus. So this is a very common scenario. You have a middle-aged man or woman uh, with vague knee pain, they go to the orthopedic surgeon, they want to make sure everything is all right, send them to do an MRI, and you just see mild degeneration or minimal joint effusion, and it's just uh, small subtle findings, a tiny bigger cyst, and that's it. So, of course, that's very easy to report. You just have to report there is mild degeneration of the posterior horn medium meniscus with no definite tears, the minimal effusion, and the bigger cyst, and then you are ready to go. So, uh, finally, just take a look at the other sequences we have. This is the T1. There is no mucoid degeneration. ACL is intact. We just want to make sure there is no, no fracture or fissure we missed. There is nothing else we can see. And this is the uh, volumetric gradient sequence, just to make sure that the articular cartilage is intact and we didn't miss anything. And this is your tiny Baker cyst. So that's the first case. Now let's jump to the second one. So the second case, uh, we will also start with uh, the axials. And let's see what we have here. Oh, there is now a pathology we can see clearly at the retropatellar cartilage. So now we are going to start seeing pathology. So let's uh, just examine the case uh, bit by bit, sequence by sequence, and then see uh, what we can uh, find and how to write it. So at the axial scans, the uh, patella is normally positioned. Uh, the retropatellar cartilage shows abnormal signal. <coughs> On the T2 axial, you can see this is a fissure. This is a chondral fissure that's just slightly reaching uh, the girth of the uh, retropatellar cartilage with minimal bone marrow bruising or bone marrow edema under this fissure, and the rest of the retropatellar cartilage is intact. So we have here is a tiny uh, chondral uh, fissure with maybe another tiny uh, flap component, you can see the hyperintense signal is slightly extending within the articular cartilage and not surfacing again. So that's tiny chondral fissure with small uh, flap tear of the retropatellar cartilage at the lateral facet. What else do we have? We have mild amount of joint effusion. Let's check the ACL. The ACL uh, femoral attachment is good. The rest of the fibers are intact, coursing uh, clearly uh, intact to the tibial attachment. What else do we have here? This nice structure is the posterior oblique ligament, the, mi the minimal effusion. Uh, there is maybe a tiny evoluting kida baker cyst. There's a tiny baker cyst information just arising uh, between the uh, semi member noses and the medial head of the gastrocnemius, but there is no definite other pathological changes that we see. This is the popliteus muscle. Okay, and we can trace the popliteus tendon up to its insertion at the lateral femoral condyle, the medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament. All are good. There is no definite other pathology at the axial scans except for this chondral fissure and tiny flap at the retropatellar cartilage. Now let's switch to the sagittal and coronal scans and see if there is any other pathology before we say how to write the report. <coughs> so, uh, let's start from the medial side. This is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, anterior horn of the medial meniscus, and there is something here at the articular cartilage. There is focal area of thinning out. Let's just move the cursor. Yes, of course, there is a small uh, area of grade 3 uh, chondropathy or grade 3 chondromalacia or grade 3 chondral injury seen at the weight-bearing aspect of the medial femoral condyle. We can see it's more than 50% of the girth, but the uh, subchondral uh, bone, the subchondral bone is intact. There is no marrow edema. There are no pathological changes. So that's focal area of chondropathy at the weight-bearing aspect of the um, medial femoral condyle. It, it would be good, of course, to measure this uh, area, and we can roughly state that this area measures about 7 millimeter in diameter, and 
uh, involving most of the girth of the articular cartilage with intact subchondral bones. So we have initially now we have a pathology at the retropatellar cartilage, another pathological area at the uh, medial femoral condyle uh, cartilage, and let's just examine the rest of the knee to make sure there is nothing else and then see how to write the report. So uh, the medial um, meniscus is intact, the PCL looks good, ACL is slightly heterogeneous, but uh, we are sure it's intact in the axial and we'll just have to take a look at the sagittal to T T1 uh, sequence to make sure there is mucoid degeneration or not because of this straighted appearance. On the other side, the lateral meniscus is definitely intact. There are no pathological changes. Let's zoom out a bit. So uh, effusion we have is a mild amount of joint effusion. There is a plica here. There is a suprapatellar plica and maybe minimal synovitis because the synovium is heterogeneous and slightly thickened. And uh, there is no significant other pathological changes. This nice structure here is the arcuate ligament. You can see it here. And this is the popliteofibular ligament. This is the fibular head, the popliteus tendon, and this is the popliteofibular ligament. So there are no pathological changes at the posterolateral corner. This is the popliteus muscle and the tendon passing through the hiatus. Of course, as we demonstrated before, this is the popliteus hiatus behind the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So uh, medial collateral ligament looks good, as well as the lateral collateral ligament. Uh, Posteromedial and posterolateral corner are fine. So now, in this case, we also have a very limited pathology. That's the chondral fissure and small flap tear at the retropatellar cartilage involving the uh, lateral facet and the focal area of grade 3 chondropathy measuring about 7 mm in diameter seen at the weight-bearing aspect of the medial femoral condyle with intact subchondral bone. So uh, this is of course in addition to the mild joint effusion and that's it. So in this case you just have to report the pathology at the retropatellar cartilage, the pathology at the medial femoral condyle cartilage the effusion, and that's it. Starting from the next case, uh, which will have uh, more findings than this, I'll start uh, uh, putting you uh, an example of the report, uh, a well-structured report uh, that fulfills all the findings because from the next case uh, we will have multiple findings. So now let's jump to case number three. And case number three we will start with the axis as usual. Let's just zoom up a bit. So we have the T2, we have the PD fat uh, axial scans. We can see, of course, to start with, there is a significant amount of joint effusion. The retropatellar cartilage looks good. There are no fissures, no ulcers, nothing. The synovium is slightly hypertrophied, it's irregular. So we have a joint effusion with some sort of synovitis. Let's take a look at the ACL attachment. The ACL attachment is good, homogeneous, hypointense, no signal fluid between uh, the ACL fibers and the femoral condyle, the lateral femoral condyle. Uh, just take a look at the other structures. This is the posterior oblique ligament, posterior medial corner, MCL. On the other side, this is the lateral collateral ligament, and this nice structure here, the popliteus tendon. So muscles are good, marrow signal is good. So now let's search for a cause for this effusion. Let's now switch to the sagittal scans and the coronal scans. So in the sagittal scans, we can now see clearly there is a pathological changes in the posterior horn of the median meniscus. And now we have to describe this pathology and this thick uh, tear and see which type of tear uh, we can describe. So let's just zoom a little at the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Now we can see there is background of degeneration. Okay, the, menis uh, the meniscal uh, substance is hyper intense in signal and this hyper intensity is uh, involving mainly the posterior horn and the inner aspect shows the inner aspect of the posterior horn as we go to the center of the joint there is a horizontal 
uh, tear reaching the inferior surface and as we stressed before it's just it's not just a horizontal tear you cannot just say this is a horizontal tear of the posterior horn reaching the inferior surface you have to stress that this uh, tear has a macerated appearance the inferior surface is just frayed it's fragmented so to describe this i would write there is mild degenerative changes of the posterior horn uh, of the median meniscus and uh, there is a macerated uh, horizontal tear uh, involving the posterior horn with interruption of the inferior surface so let's make sure there is no other pathology we can see clearly the meniscocapsular attachments are intact the anterior horn is good in the coronal scans you can see that the meniscal body the median meniscal body is good there is no other pathology at the median meniscus and uh, taking a look at the lateral meniscus this is the posterior horn and the body and the anterior horn and in the sagittal scan the lateral meniscus also looks very nice so uh, acl is good and in the t1 there is no mucoid degeneration it has clear fibers so the striation is just a uh, normal appearance pcl is also good and we have just the torn uh, median meniscus and the effusion so as you now see on your uh, screen this is an example of a report for such a case we report a mild degenerative changes of the posterior horn of the median meniscus showing a horizontal tear with fraying of the inferior surface that would be uh, quite satisfactory for the uh, orthopedist to know that the meniscal substance is frayed it's macerated and if he uh, goes inside with an arthroscope he would probably have to remove most of the meniscal substance so, so he would remove the entire uh, posterior horn of the meniscus or just remove all this area and leave the meniscal base so that would be uh, resulting in an accelerated uh, process of osteoarthritis if you remove and in such cases we have seen orthopedists opting to uh, leaving the meniscus as long as the patient can tolerate the pain and postponing the um, meniscectomy uh, because of course the concept is to preserve as much meniscal substance as you can so early meniscectomy is not always advised and uh, once uh, you say that the meniscus is frayed it's macerated and uh, it's involving most of the posterior horn then uh, the decision of the orthopedist uh, may vary according to your report so that's a clear case a nice case now let's go to a more complex one so case number four we'll start as usual with the axials we have the pd and the t2 uh, of course there is some sort of a joint effusion the retropatellar cartilage looks good So let's take a look at the attachment of the ACL. This is also looks looking nice. And okay, what's this on the medial side? There is localized fluid here. Can you see this? This is abnormal fluid signal. And this is surrounding these three tendons we talked about before, the sartorias, gracilis, and semitendinosus. And this is the area we call the pes and serenus. This is the common insertion of these three tendons at the uh, medial aspect of the tibial metaphysis. And we can now clearly see there is fluid here. We have to comment on this and verify the pathology. Uh, as we are scrolling, there is an abnormal structure appearing uh, at the center of the joint, and we have to see what this is exactly. Uh, otherwise, in the axial scans, we don't see any other pathology. The marrow is good muscles and tendons are good the medial collateral ligament looks intact and so does the lateral collateral ligament everything looks good but we have this bizarre structure at the center of the joint and we have this fluid surrounding the pes and serenus plus the joint effusion so now let's switch to the sagittal and the coronal scans and see what we can find so first let's start with the median meniscus We'll starting with the median meniscus, we see there is a horizontal hyperintense linear signal and that signal is coursing obliquely and interrupting the inferior surface of the median meniscus at the mid zone. 
the base is intact, the apex is intact, and there is just minimal uh, fraying. Uh, what else can we see on the medium meniscus? This is the linear signal. So as we said, the horizontal tear would appear uh, on the sagittal scan as a linear signal crossing the meniscal substance reaching the surface and on the coronal scans where the uh, meniscal uh, posterior horn appearing as a rectangle you can see that the linear signal is almost bisecting the uh, rectangular uh, posterior horn into an upper and a lower half and that you can call a horizontal cleavage tear or you can call it a horizontal oblique tear just reaching the inferior surface with no significant uh, maceration. Also, uh, now we are at the level of the meniscal body and you can notice here there is an abnormal signal uh, within the meniscal body. So now we are this area at the site of the meniscal body. You can see that there is another degenerative changes or degenerative signal within the meniscal body. So for the medial meniscus, we are reporting a horizontal tear of the posterior horn medial meniscus reaching the inferior surface at the mid-zone and this would be associated with degenerative changes of the medial meniscal body. Now let's see the lateral meniscus and if there is any pathology and of course the first thing that you should see there is an abnormal appearance of both horns. The anterior horn and the posterior horn are not triangular at all. So to compare with we have to know uh, the uh, posterior horn of the medial meniscus, although torn, it still looks triangular, and the anterior horn also looks triangular with well-defined uh, pinpoint apex. Compare this to the appearance of the lateral meniscus. No, this is globular, this is amputated, and this, is, this looks wrong. Now, just take a look at the meniscal body. It also looks amputated with abnormal signal, abnormal shape. There is no triangular shape at all. And now, while we are scrolling, take a look at this structure at the center of the joint. This is what we saw in the axial, and this is, yes, of course, that's a bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus. So this is what a bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus looks like. You don't see the double PCL sign you are used to, but you see a very l big centrally displaced meniscal fragment and you can uh, clearly identify this as a bucket handle from the lateral meniscus because the horns and the body are amputated, they are abnormal in shape, there is no triangular appearance and when you scroll the coronal images you can clearly depict that this meniscal fragment is arising from the substance of the lateral meniscus and flipped within the center of the joint. Okay. So what else do we have to look for? Let's take a look at the articular cartilage. I think the articular cartilage looks good. There are no definite articular cartilage pathological changes. We just uh, saw the uh, fusion we talked about. It's mild to moderate amount of joint effusion. There may be a small plica here. The suprapatellar fat pad is good. The hophas fat pad is good. Uh, we saw the uh, bursitis with the fluid signal surrounding the pes and serinus, so we are now clear there is pes and serinus bursitis. Medial collateral ligament is nice, and as well as the lateral collateral ligament, so there is no other definite pathological changes. So now I'll put on the report, as you see on your screen. Uh, for this case, we report a horizontal tear of the posterior medial meniscus reaching the inferior surface at the mid-zone and associated degenerative changes of the meniscal body. There is a bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus with centrally displaced fragment. If you want to write this right away uh, at the description above, or if you want to just uh, give a little detail, the distorted size, shape, and signal of the lateral meniscus with the centrally displaced, either way it's good. You can just hit uh, the report with the bucket handle tear, or you can describe a little in the body of the report. But in, co in the conclusion, you have to be conclusive. So uh, in the conclusion, you are just writing a bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus. And of course, there is a mild joint effusion and a pes and serinus uh, bursitis. So uh, two more cases for this uh, session. Now let's jump to case number five. And in this case, uh, starting uh, as usual with the axial, let's just zoom a little. Of course, as soon as you start 
you know there's something wrong with this knee. The retropatellar cartilage is almost gone at the medial facet. There is abnormalities at the subchondral bone. There is marrow edema. There is marrow edema here at the lateral femoral uh, condyle as well. And as you go, there is obviously some pathology at the medial femoral condyle. Let's just check the ACL. The ACL looks good. And the femoral attachment is good. We have a tiny bigger cyst rising from the uh, area between the semimembranosus and medial head of gastrocnemius. Let's just take a look at the other structures. The medial collateral ligament looks good. The lateral collateral ligament looks good. And this is the popliteus muscle. And the popliteus tendon also looks intact. So we have effusion. We have obviously some sort of uh, osteoarthritis and we will see this more clearly at the axial and coronal uh, sorry at the sagittal and coronal scans so now let's switch the views this is the sagittal this is our beloved coronal and now let's see let's see uh, how we can describe this so we are starting with the medial meniscus the anterior horn is good and the posterior horn is obviously pathological. What we can say here, this is a horizontal cleavage tear of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And we can see that the tear has a macerated inferior surface. The inferior surface is clearly macerated and fibrillated. There is a parameniscal cyst, this small cyst adjacent to the base of the meniscus. And there is abnormality here. Let's just take the coronal, okay. So the meniscus is degenerated. The root is apparently intact. We don't have a definite root tear, but the meniscus is diffusely degenerated. And we have this horizontal cleavage tear and the meniscal degeneration is obviously extending. We are going anterior and the degeneration is obviously extending to the meniscal body as well. So how you can describe this there are degenerative changes of the body and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus with the horizontal cleavage macerated tear at the posterior horn associated with a parameniscal cyst so that's how you describe such a tear you begin with the background of the degeneration and then you describe the cleavage tear its macerated appearance and the adjacent parameniscal cyst so that's the correct way to describe such a tear and now let's see if there are any other pathological changes. As we said, we also we already know there is uh, if joint effusion, and we already know there is a tiny baker cyst. Now let's take a look at the articular cartilage at the rest of the joint and see what else is wrong. Uh, for the retropatellar cartilage, we already know there is grade four chondral injury. There is grade four chondromalacia at the retropatellar cartilage because there is full thickness defect of the cartilage and there are subchondral uh, bone abnormalities, there is edema and cystic changes. And uh, if you look at the medial compartment, there are some similar changes. So the medial compartment, the articular cartilage of the medial femoral condyle and the tibial plateau are thinned out. Uh, that's osteoarthritis, of course. The articular cartilage is thinned out. You have several degenerative cystic changes uh, at the tibial plateau, and that's changes corresponding with osteoarthritis and at uh, the anterior margin of the uh, lateral femoral condyle there is also a sizable area of chondropathy with subchondral uh, cystic changes and this has to be of course reported uh, as well because this will be a, a site of pain uh, and this is not the weight bearing aspect so this is the anterior margin of the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral compartment is rather healthy so uh, we have to report this as well so as you can now see i'll put the report on the screen uh, how can you report uh, such a case it's rather complex you have to report uh, as follows you have to report the degenerative changes of the body and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus with horizontal cleavage macerated tear and associated parameniscal cyst uh, detailing the articular structure abnormalities would be good to put in the body of the report but at the conclusion as we said you have to always be conclusive don't just put the description copy and paste in the uh, conclusion so 
in the conclusion, this is osteoarthritic changes. There is mild effusion. There is a tiny bicker cyst on the background of osteoarthritis with the described uh, median meniscal tear, and that's it. So if you want to describe a little in the body of the report, it's okay. But in the conclusion, just be concise and put the exact uh, uh, findings uh, in the conclusion and just no description. Okay, so that's osteoarthritis with the effusion beaker cyst and the medial meniscal pathology. Now let's switch to the last case for this session, and that's case number six. Starting with the axils as we do. So the retropatellar cartilage is, I think it's okay, it's slightly thin, but there are no chondral fissures or ulcers. We have a significant amount of joint effusion, but uh, medial and lateral collateral ligaments are nice. This is the posterior oblique ligament also looks good. We have some sort of a tiny beaker cyst. The ACL attachment is nice, clearly inserted at the lateral femoral condyle. There is no pathology here. So now let's see what's wrong. Switching to the sagittal and the coronal. Now let's see what pathology can we find. Of course, there is obviously degeneration of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And we say this is degeneration because it's not reaching the meniscal surface. So the anterior horn looks good. The body is slightly degenerated as well. But as you go posteriorly, you will now notice this meniscal tear. And there is amputation of the meniscal root. It's not reaching the edge of the condyle. So you can still see substance of the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, but the posterior horn substance is ghost-like, it's amputated, and you can see this clearly at the coronal scans, and that's a definite meniscal root tear. And you can know this is a meniscal root tear, of course, uh, because the meniscus is also slightly extruded. The meniscus is going uh, outside the edge of the uh, femoral condyle from the lateral aspect. So it's amputated here, and it's slightly moved uh, outwards. Uh, beneath the MCL. And you can see that the MCL is slightly uh, lax. This is not the normal taut contour of the medial collateral ligament. Instead, this is slightly convex outwards and this denotes some sort of laxity of the medial collateral ligament. So what else can we see? Let's take a look at the lateral meniscus. The lateral meniscus looks okay. This is, as we said before, this is the transverse intermeniscal ligament. This is not a pathology. You cannot mistake this for a meniscal tear. This is the attachment of the transverse intermeniscal ligament between the anterior horn of both menisci. Okay. Now you can see, of course, there is the joint effusion. There is edema. The fibers of the anterior cruciate ligament are striated, but showing preserved contour. Taking a quick look at the T1, you will see this pathognomonic cloud appearance at the sagittal T1 that's consistent with mucoid degeneration of the ACL. So uh, let's see if we have any other pathology. Yes, if you can take a look at this area, there is an abnormal signal here and we might have overlooked this in the axial scans. Yes, there is an area here with a hyperintense signal and that area is the myotendinous junction of the popliteus muscle. In fact, uh, this man presented with a history of uh, twisting a knee injury and then uh, posterior knee pain persistent after that. Of course, in the setting of the meniscal root there, he could not localize exactly the site of the pain. But now looking at the sagittal scans and corresponding axial scans, we know there is abnormality right here. That's the deep fibers of the popliteus. That's the popliteus myotendinous junction. And also getting the T2, this is an abnormal signal at the popliteus myotendinous junction. And that's corresponding to a grade one strain. And uh, as you might know, muscle injuries are classified into three uh, grades. Uh, that's called strain, 
not a sprain as uh, for the ligaments and tendons. So grade one strain is just the abnormal hyperintense signal and feathery appearance without definite interruption of the fibers. A grade two strain is the partial tear that's associated with interrupted fibers and uh, edema, a moderate edema and maybe a hematoma formation. And grade three injury or grade three strain is the complete tear uh, of the muscle. So that's grade one or grade one to two strain of the popliteus myotendinous junction. So uh, we have to look if there is anything else. The only thing I uh, see now is there is relative thinning of the articular cartilage at the medial uh, compartment of the joint compared to the lateral compartment. So at the lateral compartment, you see there is quite a nice girth of the articular cartilage, but at medially the joint space is narrowed and the articular cartilage is thinned. And if you look closely, you can see the small marginal osteophytes. So that's evolving osteoarthritis. And we can verify, verify this at the volumetric uh, gradient sequence where you can see here the articular cartilage is very thin compared to the articular cartilage on the lateral compartment. This is good girth of the articular cartilage, that's normal girth. And on the medial compartment, you can see the marginal osteophytes and you can see clearly that the joint space is narrowed and the articular cartilage is thin. So how to report this? This is the report now on your screen. We report as the generative changes of the posterior of the medial meniscus with root tear and mild meniscal extrusion. And uh, there is mucoid degeneration of the ACL. There is a grade one strain at the popliteus myotendinous junction. And uh, of course, the moderate effusion and the medial femorotibial osteoarthritis. So uh, we'll stop here uh, now. Uh, next time, we'll show you uh, more cases with more complexity of the findings. But before I go, I want to uh, leave you a small quiz. Let me show you this case. And in this case, I'll just ask you about one structure. Uh, I'm not going to scroll all the case. I just uh, want to uh, summarize uh, the findings here. This is a post-operative knee. This guy had previous surgery at uh, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. He had partial uh, medial meniscectomy. You can see here the meniscal substance is irregular and partially amputated. That's post-operative finding. The quiz is about this structure. So I want you to examine this structure and tell me what this is. This nice rounded structure here, you can see the PCL and you can see this structure beneath the PCL. So the quiz of uh, today would be what is this structure? Uh, in order to answer the quiz, if you are interested, you can find the link to a Google form uh, in the description of the video. Just fill the form and send me uh, the answer. What is this structure? And uh, we'll highlight uh, the ones who answer correctly in the next video. And see you again soon in the next video with more complex cases of the knee and we'll start talking about ACL injuries and post-operative cases. Thank you very much and see you all the next time. Don't forget to subscribe and to receive all the updates. Bye-bye.